Oh YouTube fans, here again. And I figure why not this one? Go with Lowell Trossett Jr. And he's a member of all the Dick Jones he's done. Why not this one? It's one not a lot of people talk about. It's very hard to see on DVD. Yes, you could say it's a rip rip well, you could say rip off, yeah. I meant to say you could say it's an Indiana Jones rip off, a knock off, whatever you want to call it. With another one of my favourite actors. That being Chuck Norris in Firewalker. Firewalker's a good one. I was like the original art couple. I've seen American DVD rips and I've got to make it look shit compared to how it looked back in the golden day of 1986. The original poster. I've got it somewhere on video. I can't remember where I've got it. I've got it somewhere on DVD. A DVD rip because again, I had to get on this con this counter. Why? I don't know why. But the original art cover is brilliant and I think Lowell Trossick Jr and Chuck Norris as a team hit this film beautiful, beautiful and why, why, why do they not make films like this anymore? I say it again, why do they not make films like Firewalker anymore? Instead of seeing a Dan Dad Indiana Jones, I keep doing it so why not? Digging things up from the past. These are films I love to see. I say it again. These are films I love to see. Chuck Norris, Low Sausage Jr. And Jake G. And this is sort of like Indiana Jones. Not based on the olden times. But you could say Indiana Jones in 1986. That's how the film came out in 86. But there, this to me is like Indiana Jones in 1986. And this is like... What would happen if Chuck Norris got the role of Indiana Jones instead of being Harrison Ford? No, I like Harrison Ford. So it starts off where he's got untied in a desk. Well, that's they're getting chased after baddies, him and Lord Dossett Jr. And they get taught and they get... Not like that. My father's in today and he wanted me to help him with a bin. So he raised me out in. He's asked me to help him with a dustbin. I'll be doing that in a minute. So he raised me out in there. There you go. But as I was about to say, yeah, so they get taught and they get tied up. But it kind of reminds me of a music video, this was sort of like Indiana Jones thing. But the man's to get a bit of task, Chuck Norris, and he cuts and gets out of it. And yes, Chuck Norris is more of the star of this film, but like I said, I like Lowell Trossett Jr. I think him and Chuck Norris hit it well. I think they hit it well. So it's a good one, this. I think they make a good team in it. It's a good adventure film, a good action film. You can see this is a time when Chuck Norris was getting sick of doing his martial art films. We've know there's some martial arts and some fighting in it. So basically the film's about a knife. And they're going after this magical knife, and one of the ones that plays the villain, you can trust your head with his bare hands. He's been in like a few films, he's been in this Sylvester Stallone film, being lock up. And you might remember him being Predator, the one that cuts his chest and he takes on Predator, and you get the idea he gets killed off stream. Sad to say, the actor's no longer with us, may he rest. But it's not a bad film. Action film again, like most Chuck Norris films, the scene where they get in a fight in a bar, which is like typical with Chuck Norris. There's a scene where he's fighting and they meet this girl on the way. Pretty girl, been in a few films. You might remember him being in Fast Gordon, he's alive. That's right, you might remember him being the leading girl in Fast Gordon. She's been in a few early episodes of Dias, been in a few things, very attractive actors in that era. But yeah, you might remember her in Fast Garden. So she teams up with Chuck Norris and Lord Tossic Jr. You, know, you do get one actor, you think you've seen him before, he'd been in a Bond film, The Living Daylight. Funny enough, he was in Raiders of the Lost Art. And I think right, he was in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. And um, I do remember him also being the villain in Sullivan's mind which is a lot of Indiana Jones films as well as playing in this mate and I like him in this he plays Chuck Norris's mate they're in a pub and they get along but then they move on to look for the knife 
And like I said, that dye is fine in Colton Norris at the date bit when he's in the two. But for, I'm going ahead of myself there. I'm going ahead. So remember that there's in the tune that these Indians ultimately where low toss it to and says, Who is these people? And Tut Norris shoots some of the dawn. There's a good bit where they go for this boiling water. And the main film is about the sacrifice of the girl. Tut Norris has a date fight, kills the badder, the baddie goes on fire, and then they walk off. The only thing with the film. The only thing with the film is it has a typical sequel bay ending. So there's a bit where they're in a pub and they're drinking beer. And the main phone, if you remember that in the opening, had them tied up. He's there. He's smiling. I'm surprised at that scene, man. I'm surprised they don't have to be continued. <laughs> I really am surprised they don't do that. But you've got a deep bit of music at the end. It pans out. It goes... Do -do 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 you get that as music, it ends, beautiful, beautiful film. And yes, I'm crying, I'm getting emotional because they don't make films like this anymore. They do not make offensive films like this, whether it's King Solomon's Mind, whether it's Romance in the Stone. These type of films, I think, I fucking think this would make more off. So I actually like um Firewalk, it's a typical offensive film, it's a die going after the match school knife, a beautiful girl's about to be sacrificed, Tut Norris comes in to save the day, kicks the shit out of the badder, happy ending. It's an offensive film. And it's like I said, it's the there when Tut Norris is getting sick of doing these sort of Rambo rip-offs, whether it be the missing in action, in first of USA, so on. He wanted to do something different and low tossic tune that I know I'm repeating myself, even though he's not the star of the film, I think they make a good team. They make a brilliant team. It's the best in the sea, a die who's a hero. Half when I do know halfway through the film you think low tossic tune he gets killed, which is hard to watch now he's no longer with us. So like I say, you think Low Tossic Tuna gets killed. There's a bit where he's out and you think he got killed half by a Tocker tile or an alligator, one or the other. But that's not the case. He gets tied up and our mate Tut Norris comes in and he saves the day and he saves Low Tossic Junior. So it's good. It's professing to see two dies, like the Indiana Jones died, wanna be be my mate Tut Norris. Low Toss It Junior, and it's like I say, it's a book in here, it's an offensive film, and why why do they not make films like this anymore? I know, I know I'm repeating myself, why do they not make films like Firewalker anymore? So fuck it, without a do, a five star rating for me, because you never see a film like this now. Nowadays it's reboots, it's re-shitting in, it's films we don't fucking want anymore. It's digging things up from the past. This they could say they're doing that, but at the same time there's a lot, a lot of Indiana Jones knockoffs in the eighties. This one is a good one. And I almost forgot to say they've got one actor in it who's his Indian and die. And sadly to say he passed away not long when they was filming this. And if you think you've seen this die before, he played in Stir Taser. But you will remember him in Portertice 2. That's right, Portertice 2. He was the Indian fellow who helped tie our lamb. Sad to say in this, you can definitely tell he was dying. He was a lot thinner. He was John Dean. So not long after they did this, sad to say he passed away. So I almost forgot to say he's in the film and all. So it's a good one. Again, without a two. Five star rating for me. That's Firewalker. Until then, be smart, be safe. See you later.